swing for nearly all of them. At the hairdressers even, chiefly of course there in their capital Paris, they have to take their turn, as I was informed in this etherogram, exactly as people had to take their turn not long ago in the community Russia for receiving American flour. And from this contagious rush of women to the hairdressers to get their hair cut, court proceedings are already arising between these hairdressers and the fathers, husbands, and brothers of these shorn lambs, and many what are called divorces are also obtained. It is interesting that the judges there, as it was also communicated in that etherogram, in each case acquitted the hairdressers on the grounds that the beings of the female sex who went to them were already over 16 years of age, and had therefore, owing to the laws there, reached their majority and were free to do as they pleased. But of course, had these French judges, and in general the judges of the whole planet, known that there exists in the universe a definite law concerning all the formations, without exception, which serve the great trogoato egocrat in the transformation of cosmic substances, then they would, without any doubt, completely change their opinion concerning that understanding which they express by the word majority. The point is that according to that definite cosmic law, all those separate individuals among whom are numbered also all Keschapmartinian beings of the female sex are for the transformation of cosmic substances the sources of all those active elements which in further cosmic formations must serve in the process of the great holy law Triyamazikamdo for fusion as its second holy force. That is, they always are, as is said, the negative or passive principle. And so, owing to this definite cosmic law, which I've just mentioned, these sources which transform the active elements which serve as the passive principle can never be free to have any independent manifestations. Only these sources can have this independence, which transform the active elements, which must serve for the Holy Triyamazikamno as the affirming or active principle. That is just why these sources, which serve as the passive principle, cannot be responsible for their manifestations. That is, they cannot be as they say, major. While telling you about this separate grouping of the three-brained beings that is about France, I must also tell you for the fullness of its characterization that in France there are also beings of the ruling class who also invented very good means for the calming of the minds of the ordinary beings of their community just as the power-possessing beings of the big community Russia employ such a means for the encouragement of the use of the famous Russian vodka, and the power-possessing beings of the community England at the present time attain the same by their not less famous sport. However, it must be admitted that although the power-possessing beings of the community France also adopt these good means, and successfully attain their egoistic aims. Yet these means, though, be it said, to no credit of the power-possessing beings of the communities of England and Russia, bring scarcely any harm to the planetary bodies themselves of the ordinary beings. This is not all. By these means they unconsciously brought and bring to the ordinary beings of their community a certain benefit diverting them and giving them temporary relief from the ill effects of their fascination by fashions, invented by present and future Hasnamuses, gathered in this capital from various countries and under the slavery of which fashions the ordinary beings of this same France have now fallen even more than all other beings of other communities. 
These good means are called their fairs. And at the present time, such fairs are held in the principal squares of all their towns and villages in turn. And moreover, just in those squares in which about two centuries ago, the three-brained beings there usually held discussions on what they call religious moral subjects. Injustice, it must be said, my boy, that these French fairs are very, very gay places. I confess that even I myself like to visit them and pass there an hour or two thinking about nothing. At these French fairs, everything can be had cheap and fine. For instance, every being there for a trifling 50 centimes can whirl to complete stupor on various what are called pigs, chameleons, whales, and so forth, and on various American and non-American new inventions designed just to produce stupor. If a being recovers too quickly from all these ways of getting stupefied, he can then have there, also for a few more centimes, uh, something very tasty most often prepared right on the spot. It is true that from these tasty things, the beings, as far as their stomachs are concerned, often become... But what is this in comparison with the pleasure they've had in eating them? And in case any of the ordinary beings there wishes, as they say, to try his luck again for a few centimes, he can satisfy this desire there also on the spot. He may try his luck in every way, for at those famous French fairs, there is every means of gambling that exists there on the planet Earth, for speculation as well as for fun and almost all their games of chance are seen there. In a word, all the games, beginning with the roulette of Monte Carlo and ending with the game of Snip Snap Snorum. 